Welcome to the free anaesthetic tutorial on the modern variable bypass vaporizer. Today we will cover an introduction, schematic and explanation including key features, some advantages, some disadvantages. We will summarize at the end and we will include some example MCQ questions for you to have a little look at. Introduction A variable bypass or plenum vaporizer is a common method of delivery of volatile anaesthetic agents. It can be used safely with sevoflurane, enflurane, and halothane. It cannot be used with desflurane, and we will cover the reason for this in a subsequent tutorial. Each vaporizer is calibrated to a specific anaesthetic agent and cannot be safely interchanged between agents due to their differing physicochemical properties. Schematic and explanation. As you can see, there are a number of key components. On this slide, we have shown all of the key components that we think are important. We will describe these as we go on. The fresh gas enters the vaporizer and is split into either the bypass stream or the volatile stream. The splitting ratio, which describes the proportion of fresh gas that enters the volatile chamber, is controlled by the splitting valve, and this connects and is calibrated on an external dial. The anaesthetist can use this dial to dial up the desired splitting ratio. The gas flows entering the vaporization chamber encounter liquid volatile agent and as it travels past the volatile, evaporation of the volatile occurs and this volatile will then join the gas flow to the patient. The vaporizer relies on the gas leaving the vaporization chamber being fully saturated and therefore exerting the saturated vapor pressure of the anaesthetic agent. It achieves saturation by a number of mechanisms. Number one, wicks and baffles. These ensure that the gas flow is slowed, maximizing contact area with the volatile, giving the volatile every chance to vaporize and join the fresh gas flow. These wicks and baffles significantly increase the internal resistance to flow of the vaporizer. The saturated vapor from the volatile stream then rejoins with the fresh gas from the bypass chamber which dilutes the volatile concentration to an appropriate and safe amount to maintain the desired level of anaesthesia. If the gas from the volatile stream was not fully saturated with anaesthetic vapour, then there would be no way to control the amount of volatile anaesthetic delivered to the patient, and therefore this mechanism is crucial to the safe supply of anaesthetic agent to the patient. Due to the principle of the latent heat of vaporization. See our Instagram for a free anaesthetic tutorial flashcard on this. As the volatile liquid evaporates, it loses energy. This causes cooling of the remaining contents. Given the saturated vapour pressure exerted is reliant on the temperature, as the temperature decreases, so does the saturated vapour pressure of the volatile, meaning the output of the vaporizer will be reduced. To combat this, the vaporizer needs to have methods of temperature compensation. Modern vaporizers are made of copper, which is a good heat conductor, and because of its high mass, it acts as a heat sink to keep the thermal energy within the system. The other mechanism present is the bimetallic strip. This is a strip of two metals which expand at different rates as they are heated, usually made of steel and copper. The different expansions force the bimetallic strip to bend one way if heated or the other if cooled. This principle can be utilized to increase or reduce the amount to which the volatile stream is diluted by the bypass stream and therefore the overall concentration of the volatile delivered. Safety features. Each vaporizer for each volatile agent has a different color. For example, sevoflurane is always colored yellow. Each volatile specific vaporizer is filled with a different non-interchangeable key so one cannot fill, for example, sevoflurane with isoflurane. Only one vaporizer can be switched on at any point the anaesthetic machine is on, and this is secondary to the mechanism of interlocking bars on the anaesthetic machine. The vaporizer has internal valves that prevent spillage if the vaporizer was knocked over, for example. Advantages The plenum vaporizer is easy to use, it is reliable. When calibrated, it is accurate to plus or minus 15% of what is read on the dial and no power source is needed. Disadvantages. It cannot be used with desflurane. It must be used out of circle, secondary to the high internal resistance. 
The heatsink is heavy and therefore the plenum vaporizer is not easily used in remote settings. And if it is used in the extreme environment, anaesthetic may be delivered, but there is a risk of inaccuracy. To summarise, the variable bypass vaporizer is an effective method of delivery of most of the modern anaesthetic agents. It has a, a number of very clever features to improve patient safety. A good working knowledge of the variable bypass vaporizer is required for the anaesthetic FRCA exams. Exam questions. True or false? The plenum vaporizer must be used out of circle. The plenum vaporizer may be used with desflurane. In the plenum vaporizer, the heat sink is a good heat conductor. In the plenum vaporizer, the wicks and baffles reduce the internal resistance. In the plenum vaporizer, the biometallic strip allows the user to control the splitting ratio. Thanks very much for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed this free anaesthetic tutorial on the plenum vaporizer. If you did, I would be very grateful if you could give us some feedback, if you could subscribe, and if you could share with your friends and your colleagues. Thanks very much. See you now.